Hi everyone, it's WG and Sensei I here. How you doing? Welcome you back to my Let's Play of Eternal Sonata. Last time around we went down to the Gilisandro Cliffs and rescued Phil. This time around we're going up to Forte Castle and see so and we'll see what awaits us up there. But first off, I did do a little bit of off-screen grinding up to level 16. Uh, Pulpa learned Earth Heal. Earth Heal heals a little bit more than Orange Glow. The only problem with Earth Heal is that it doesn't heal yourself. It's a very strange skill, but use it in combination with Orange Glue, which heals anybody, and you can heal pretty much anybody for anything. Earth Heal does, however, heal more than Orange Glue. Also, Viola learned Heal Aru. This heals everybody, and as you can see, it has infinite range, which is really, really good. The only problem is Viola's magic isn't that good, so you won't be healing for much, but it is still a pretty good skill to have. I did also equip everybody with accessories because this this fight coming up is actually quite tough. I would recommend um, I recommend a little bit of setup before this fight, and the setup also also includes removing beat from your party, from your battle party. As you can see, each character has a sort of a yellow border around each of them. That means that they are in your battle party. Now, if Beat is in your battle party for this fight, regardless of where he is on the position, he will be automatically removed and replaced by the next person in the order. So, as you can see, I've removed Beat from my current battle party and have a battle party of Frederick, Allegretto, and Polka. So, with that being said, this boss fight is actually very tough, so I might not say much during it, but I hope to win it. Let's go do it. This is Chuba. As I mentioned, this is a very hard boss fight. I might not say much during it. That attack, you do need to block it. It's very strong. Yeah, I'm not moving. Good. Uh, missed most of that. Yes, you need to block every single one of his attacks because they are very strong. Even blocking, you can see how much damage it's doing. Oh, 
wasn't expecting Puka Ame. Yeah, I'm doing it twice. Ah. Uh, should have went around to the side. No, we're gonna see mistake again. I think he's nearly dead. I thought I missed that. I thought I missed that. You get 5,000 experience for him. You don't get any gold though.
Yeah. No, I never thought it was that easy. I'm impressed. You really seem like you know what you're doing. Oh, uh, well, you know, I am a magician after all. I get it, Widow. You just don't want Polka to know what it is you really do, right? Well, you don't have to worry about me spilling the beans. My lips are sealed tight as a clam. <laughs> I think we can all imagine what kinds of things you were up to in Retardondo. Don't worry about it. Tight as a clam? Is that so? Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen a clam that had its shell completely closed. Come on, let's hurry and get out of here already. Allegretto's lock picking and skill increased. Anyway, let's continue on. We actually have a new party member. Yes, Salsa is a party member. She joins you at level 17. And she's actually pretty good. Although, at the start, she's not. Because she has a weapon that we haven't really seen before. A weapon that inflicts greater damage to dark creatures. As you can see, her attack is only 15. But... Her light attack is plus 30, so essentially you get 45 attack from if you inflict versus dark creatures. And that's not good because we want to be attacking any kind of creature, so not that good at the minute. But we can equip her with some tailored clothes, which I bought for her specifically. She's really good at combos. She's not that, she's actually pretty decent all around. Her magic is pretty lacking, pretty much the same as B actually, except obviously she's more melee focused than B. She also comes with Solar Flare, which is one hit, damages the enemy with a medium knockback, and Shadow Silhouette. This is Salsa's whole gimmick, she does things that, like inflict status effects on herself, so it also does damage to the enemy and then increases the power of her next special attack, and guess what? You can keep doing this. You can keep doing Shadow Silhouette and then do another Shadow Silhouette your next turn and it increases the power of it again. So you can just keep doing it. Her HP is not bad either. So overall she's pretty good. Anyway, we're going to explore this little desk. Did the guard leave his post? Hey, what do we have here? This almost makes up for, like, for getting thrown in the dungeon. You got another Club Clover. It's cool. Head down here. And a cutscene. I mean, he has a hat on himself, so he can't really complain, but also, why is there a massive mirror in this dungeon? I don't understand. Actually, can you examine it? No, he can. Anyway, let's have this person. And the world's greatest burglar, Slur. From the jewels of the gods to the devil's own treasure chest, there's nothing I can't pilfer. Or so I thought. Apparently my luck ran out sneaking into this place. I was caught before I knew it. Punishment and Forte is known to be nasty, and then I'll never get out of here. You wouldn't have to have a score piece, would you? It comes out, if it comes out nice, I'll give you something good, real good. So yes, he is another score piece NPC. Unfortunately, we don't have any score pieces to perform with him. We do have the original two that we got before, but they're not good for him. So yeah, another one for much later on. Anyway, let's continue on. What's with this hole? Hmm. 
Whoever made this hole must have been in quite a hurry. It looks suspicious to me. This seems to be our only way out. There are probably to be lots of soldiers upstairs. It'll be fine. I bet this hole was dug by a great burglar. I'm sure it'll get us outside. I don't know. Well, fearless leader, what should we do? Hmm. Alright, let's give it a try. You know what to say, if you don't go into the lion's den, you can't clean your chickens. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, <laughs> I love that line, it's the best. It, it really is. Hey, look what I found! And another Club Clover. And let's head in here. And I just remembered what this place is. Oh boy. Welcome to Andantino's Secret Passage. So yeah, this is another field dungeon. So I'm going to try and dodge a lot of these encounters. And I am also referring to map, so, and wow, immediate encounter. You foolish creatures. And I didn't change my party. <laughs> Luckily, these guys who you have seen before in the Gilisandro Plain or Hills, so you should know how to tackle them. And I missed that totally. Oh wow, a cup over. There's a little fort in this road, let's go left. And into that encounter, wow. Yeah, I'm killing you first. Oh really? I missed time that, but I still beat him. Wow, another club cover. Wow, I'm getting really lucky with these item drops. Just removing the accessories I equipped before for the boss fight. Another little fork, let's go left or west. Let's see how good you That's how powerful she can be at range. What did you expect? Wow, and another club clover. Wow, I am getting really lucky with these. You do have a little bit of invincibility for him doing that, but here's a chest, and it contains some floral powder. Always good to get that. Trying to 
dodgy. A dodgy. A dodgy. Good. Heading further down this path. Try dodgy. No, that was never going to work. idea here. <laughs> and that was a bad idea. Because now I'm poisoned. The poison is essentially you take damage at the start of your turn. Oh. Yeah, I'm going after you because you're nearly dead. Nice. Nice. Run aside, and you're dead. Luckily, all stats effects get removed at the end of each battle, but still, they're pretty bad to have. Now, if you go here, you can actually jump off. So let's do it and get this chip, which contains a branch sword. Which is a sword for Allegro. So let's equip it. And then jump down here. Luckily while jumping down you are invincible. And let's get this chest. And it contains a star cookie. This is a higher tier than the peach cookie restores 3600 hp but luckily for us the cookie items always are one point cost so they're actually really good to equip but unfortunately the star cookies are a little bit rarer and i ran into that enemy these are new enemies actually and these guys are annoying luckily though their defenses are pretty though so i'm actually going to go over here Heal a little bit. And they're very fast, as you can see. But usually they come and do their little attack and then they do that. So. And yeah, they can poison you. <laughs> Not good. Oh, but luckily their defences are low and I totally missed that. But anyway.
That's so hard to block. So hard to block. And just as I say that, I get a star cookie to drop. <laughs> that, that's actually quite funny. Let's head back round. And you did see that chest, didn't you? Let's go get it. Look, I did the dodgy. And I run into you. And yeah, I knew you were going to heal. So you head south on this path and avoid you guys. We're back out here and that chest. Which contains a frilly umbrella. New weapon for polka? Let's equip it. I just realized I need to change my party again. Trying to dodge you guys. And you actually do need to head back the way I came, up this way. Yeah, there's no choice of apart from fighting me. But because I approached you from behind. I do get a preemptive strike on you. Nice. From the side. Nice. That's level up for Frederick. I'm Polka leveled up during that. Ah, uh, tried to dodge you. Didn't work.
o'clock. I wasn't expecting you to attack Viola. Another club clover. Wow, I'm getting really lucky. That feels good. Another level up. And we're going to end this episode right here at the save point. So next time on Eternal Sonata, we'll continue to explore Andantino's secret passage and see if it, and we'll see what lies wait in wait for us outside of it. So thank you folks for watching, and of course I will. See you again.